So if you didn't see yet, we got a new Godot build last night, and I was trying to record this sooner. I am a bit late to the party, but today we'll just be going over the features in Godot 4.5 Dev 5. So if we scroll down a bit, the first thing is going to be native Vision OS support, which Vision OS is basically like Apple's official XR environment. And it actually looks like this pull request was made by someone who is on the engineering team for Vision OS at Apple, which is really cool. Now, I typically don't work with XR stuff, but this is obviously really cool for those who do. Uh, next up, we got a really exciting one. This is going to be abstract classes for GDScript, which is something that we haven't had yet and is going to be like absolutely amazing. So you make a new abstract class now with the abstract keyword, and then obviously just define your class name and what it extends from. If you don't know what an abstract class is, I'll be doing a video on this when we actually get into the stable release. So it should be pretty soon here, but be on the lookout for that. I'm extremely excited for this uh, feature though. This is gonna be super helpful. We next have the shader baker option for exports, and this is gonna massively speed up your shader compilation times. So the example they give us here is that on some Apple devices, we have over a 20 times decrease in load times for the third person, like official demo which is absolutely insane so obviously they do mention like it's going to take a bit more time to export your build and the build size will actually have a larger size on your disc but i think that's completely worth it if you're going to speed up load times by like over 20 times i think that's absolutely insane now again they only mention um the difference on apple devices right here so i'm actually not super sure how drastically it changes the performance on other graphics cards or other operating systems like that but you probably want to end up just checking this option when you export. I mean, it seems to have more pros than cons, so definitely look into that. Next up, we have WebAssembly SIMD support, and this is something that I'm not super well versed in. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to research this before I, I had to record this video, but it looks like just an implementation for like multi-threading, I guess, for web builds. Now, you guys obviously correct me if I'm wrong about that. Again, I don't know a ton about the whole web export side, of Godot. So if this is something that excites you, definitely let me know in the comments. But yeah, I'll be reading more up on this when I get time. But aside from that, we have some really exciting ones. This one's kind of fun. We have inline color pickers in the script editor. So if I go actually over into Godot, I have a variable here and I actually kind of spoiled this. But basically, before this update, I would always define colors like this where you'd get the color class and then type like green or something. And it's always difficult to know exactly what type of green this is going to be. So now if you type the constructor for a color it gives you this little box and you can just pick a color directly from here which is absolutely insane and most of the time for like your actual games you're going to want to be referencing a color from a palette which i just realized you can actually do that with the the swatches feature that we got a year and a half or so ago i think for game jams and stuff just quick iterating this is going to be so helpful and then for all the 3d folks out there we have some updates on rendering so below we have some comparisons with this new smaa turned off or on and compared to the last video I did on something like this there's actually a lot more differences that you can see so you can see like right here this is with it turned off um, I'm gonna zoom in right here but you can see that we have some really like jagged lines around the scope here and that's probably the most noticeable thing that this comparison shows because if we switch over to this image with it turned on it's way smoother. Looks a lot crisper, more smooth. Just generally a great feature for the 3D side of things. And we have some more examples here. This one's kind of weird because the style of the game is already pretty like pixelated and jagged. It's a bit more different, I guess. Like I'm not sure which one I prefer, honestly. And then we have another example here comparing the bent normal maps, which is also just a really crazy improvement. So you can see that here, everything honestly looks pretty bland compared to this one. So you can see we have a lot more more like uh, depth and shadows in this. Now we also have these two for the same thing. So personally, I probably won't use this for <laughs> another while, but if you are making a 3D game, definitely check out these new features because they look really cool. And then we have kind of the honorable mentions section, which honestly, I think this is where some of my favorite features are. So the first one is alphabetical sorting and also animation filtering on the animation player. So there's a little video clip here. I'm actually gonna full screen this, but when you are editing animations, you can now filter your tracks and also sort them alphabetically, which they don't show in this video. 
but that is so helpful for larger animations and stuff. And then my all-time favorite feature is actually this one. So we have property hint input name, which is basically a new option for custom export types. So if you don't know what custom export is, it basically offers so much more flexibility than just regular at export. And I have a whole video on it if you want to check out all the possibilities for export custom, except this new one. But basically this new one is super cool. I'm not sure where I'm going to use it, so I still have to kind of figure that out. I'm actually going to just hit enter here so you guys can see the whole thing. This will export a selectable input action. Input actions, again, uh, just directly from your project settings. And for now, I'm just going to leave the property hint blank. But when I click on my exported property here, you can see I just have a drop down and I have my example input, which is again, the input I've defined in my input map. Now, if you want to also include the built in actions, you simply have to put in the show built in property hint. And this will allow you to select any input action from your project, which this is super cool. Like I absolutely love exported properties. I wish there was like an update that just added like a hundred plus export types, even though that's probably not realistic. Like, I don't even know if you, you, there are even that many options for export types, but they're so fun. I don't know why they're so fun. I just love them. And realistically, I don't know when I'm going to use this. Maybe it'll be fun for like a local multiplayer input selection or something. I still have to think about that. But yeah, always cool to see these like export features. I really love them. And then another really quick one, we got the quick load button back. So this one was kind of uh, disappointing for me initially because there was a build, I forgot which one it was, where you would go to export a resource like this. And you guys probably know about the quick load menu that I always talk about, but we had this icon for a bit that was the quick load icon. So you don't have to drop this down and it got removed right after it got added. So what's happened now is it's been changed a bit so that the quick load icon is only going to show when this box is empty. So we can quick load something in, but as soon as we fill up this property, the quick load icon disappears, which I actually like. I think that's a really great way to kind of balance out cluttering the UI versus offering that like quicker way to do loading. And then apart from that, we have some just general bug fixes and a couple smaller improvements. And it, like always, if you want to see all the changes, you can go to the interactive change log. I'll leave the link to this entire blog post in the description if you want to click that. And you can also download it from here. Now, once again, do not use this build on your main project because it's still a development build. But if you do just want to test out some of these new features, definitely give this a spin. And the last thing I want to mention, they say that the executables have been signed with an expired certificate. When you run this version, you might have an issue with Windows Defender where you won't actually be able to run it, which you can just override that by what they say here, running from the command line. But it looks like this isn't going to be a problem in future builds. Obviously, like when this is stable, they're going to have the certificate renewed. So you probably don't have to worry about that, but just wanted to mention it. So yeah, hats off to everyone who worked on this update. Definitely a ton of amazing features. Hoping we get a few more really cool ones before uh, we get into feature freeze and super excited for the stable release. If you wanna check out the previous development build updates I've done, again, there's the playlist, which will be in the card above. But thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you have a great week and I will see you guys in the next one.